all of humanity. As First Lady, and then a Senator, she actively supported the U.S.'s illegal wars of aggression abroad. Today, our armed forces joined our NATO allies in airstrikes against Serbian forces responsible for the brutality in Kosovo. You know, I voted for the Iraqi resolution. The president understands this. Uh, he's fully aware that it's going to take a lot of patience and painstaking planning, uh, and we're going to support him. Including thousands of chemical weapons, large volumes of chemical and biological stocks, a number of missiles and warheads, a major lab equipped to produce anthrax. She not only admitted the U.S. role in creating al-Qaeda. When the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan, we had this brilliant idea that we were going to come to Pakistan and create a force of Mujahideen, equip them with Stinger missiles and everything else to go after the Soviets inside Afghanistan. But then, despite this admission, as Secretary of State, her support of the war on Libya and the jihadis in Syria directly led to the rise of ISIS and the migrant crisis in Europe. The transition to democracy in Syria has begun, and it's time for Assad to get out of the way. President Assad is not indispensable, and we have absolutely nothing invested in him remaining in power. I think that uh, based on uh, definitions of war criminal and uh, crimes against humanity, there would be an argument to be made that uh, he would fit into that category. Libya was a different uh, kind of uh, calculation, yeah. and we didn't lose a single person. As we came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> Did it have anything to do? She was the one who announced the U.S.'s so-called Asia-Pacific pivot that has seen more U.S. military forces being placed in the Asia-Pacific as a direct military threat to China. And we look to the Asia-Pacific region, as we have for many decades, as an area where the United States is uniquely positioned to play a major role. The United States is not ceding the Pacific to anyone. And she has stated in no uncertain terms that Russia and Iran will be militarily targeted in a Clinton presidency, and that the nuclear option is, as always, on the table. And we will make sure the Iranians and the world understand that the United States will act decisively if necessary, including taking military action. There will have to be consequences for any violation by Iran, and that the nuclear option should not at all be taken off the table. That has been my position consistently. And Russia has to support the international community's efforts sincerely or be held to account that Russia and China will pay a price because they are holding up progress, blockading it, that is no longer tolerable. And unlike her many, many political statements of convenience that are merely a reflection of whatever is most politically acceptable at the moment. Do you think New York State should recognize gay marriage? No. No, okay. I support marriage for lesbian and gay couples. I represented Wall Street as a senator from New York, and I went to Wall Street in December of 2007, before the big crash that we had, and I basically said, cut it out. Quit foreclosing on homes. Quit engaging in these kinds of speculative behaviors. Now, who's exactly to blame for the housing crisis? I think there's plenty of uh, blame to go around. Home buyers who paid extra fees to avoid documenting their income should have known they were getting in over their heads. I take a backseat to no one when you look at my record and standing up and fighting for progressive values. You know, I get accused of being kind of moderate and center. I plead guilty. We went through a thorough process to identify all of my work-related emails. The lawyers doing the sorting for Secretary Clinton in 2014 did not individually read the content of all of her emails. So that the emails were immediately captured and preserved. There was no archiving at all of her emails. We can be assured that these threats of potential nuclear world war by Clinton are not idle threats. A future Clinton president would be assured of a like mind in the new prime minister in the UK, who has stated in no uncertain terms that she is willing to launch a nuclear strike that would kill hundreds of thousands. Let, let me congratulate the Prime Minister on her new, new, new rule. 
So can we cut to the chase? Is she personally prepared to authorise a nuclear strike that could kill 100,000 innocent men, women and children? Yes. And, and I have to say to the Honourable Gentleman, the whole point of a deterrent is that our enemies need to know that we would be prepared to use it. Hillary Clinton is a neocon, a war hawk, a liar, an unindicted criminal, and a Wall Street puppet. Why is it, then, that those on the so-called progressive left, who would be warning against her if she had an R next to her name, are instead lecturing other leftists that it is now their duty to fall in line and help her get elected? If Clinton is nominated and it comes to a choice between Clinton and Trump uh, in a swing state, a state where it's going to matter which way you vote, I would hold I would vote against Trump and by elementary arithmetic that means you hold your nose and you vote Democrat. Uh, I don't think there's any other rational choice. Abstaining from vote, voting uh, or say voting for say a, a candidate you prefer a minority candidate it just amounts to a vote for Donald Trump which I think is a devastating prospect for reasons I've already mentioned. We in SDS refused to vote. We wouldn't support McCarthy. We wouldn't support Humphrey. Uh, our slogan was, vote with your feet. Vote in the street. Uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm here to tell you that the slogan was right. The tactic was wrong. Uh, and uh, and uh, I think that the country, in retrospect, there would not have been a substantive change, there would have been a positive change uh, if Nixon had not been elected. But you learn from your mistakes. Hopefully other generations learn from the mistakes of those who came before them. We're all here today because we're with her and we're going to work our hearts out to make Hillary Clinton the next president of the United States. She will be the Democratic nominee for president. And I intend to do everything I can to make certain she will be the next president of the United States. The message here is as clear as it is predictable and disappointing. Once again, those with the influence to shape these events and ignite a genuine protest movement against Hillary's coronation at the Democratic National Convention are falling back into their roles as partisan ideologues, advocating for their candidate, over the other side, taking the two-party system as a fait accompli and complicity with that system as the only way forward. But as Michelle Chosodovsky of GlobalResearch.ca points out, this election is fundamentally different. This time, the fate of the world hangs in the balance. In so many words, Hillary Clinton's foreign policy stance is, quote-unquote, to blow up the planet. She has made statements to the effect that a first strike nuclear attack against Russia or Iran. There's a problem here already. You see, the earthquake affected the southern part of Haiti. The northern part of the country was entirely unaffected. But who were the beneficiaries of this? Companies like Gap, Target, and Walmart, to name a few. The Caracol factory was built, but it didn't create 60,000 jobs. It created barely 5,000 jobs. But the major American companies who got textiles tariff-free, made at low wages, benefited enormously. And the end effect on the Haitians was very, very minimal. If you look at some of the infrastructure projects that were undertaken, the Clintons had very grand plans to uh, build large tracts of homes. And there were contractors that were selected for those projects. Sometimes the contractors had experience, sometimes they did not. There's one company in Florida that spent a million dollars getting equipment into Haiti. They had experience in disaster relief, but according to the owners of that company, they only made a small donation to the Clinton Foundation. And guess what? They didn't get any relief contracts. On the other hand, the contractors who did win the awards were given the opportunity to build homes, 
and in some instances were supposed to build tens of thousands of homes for Haitians. They ended up building a fraction of that. For instance, the New Settlements program was supposed to build 15,000 homes for $53 million. Instead, it built 2,600 homes, less than a quarter of the original estimate, for $90 million, or $47 million over budget. And they got away with it. So you had contracts going to these relief organizations that were also involved with the Clinton Global Initiative. And you had this one organization, Dahlberg, that was supposed to do an assessment for relocating people that suffered from the earthquake. They determined that people should be moved to a site that happened to be on a cliff that was highly unstable. USAID's Inspector General reviewed Dahlberg's recommendations and found them basically unusable. One member of the USAID shelter team was quoted by Rolling Stone magazine as saying that the recommendations were so bad, it looked like the team never even got out of their SUVs. Another person said that only one of the people that was sent to Haiti by Dahlberg actually spoke French. Telecom mogul Dennis O'Brien is one of the world's richest people, and he's finding opportunities in the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. The Irish billionaire is the largest private investor in Haiti through his company, Digicel, and he's now leading the Clinton Global Initiative efforts down in Haiti. Probably no one came out better in the Haitian reconstruction effort than an Irish billionaire named Dennis O'Brien. He is a Clinton Foundation donor, giving them between five and $10 million. He helped arrange speeches for Bill Clinton, too. The interest of the Obama administration, particularly the former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, you know, all the, the, all the different things that have happened to help Haiti get up off the floor have been led by the U.S. And he was the owner of something called Digicel, which is a cell phone company at the time of the earthquake. As part of that relief effort, the State Department run by Hillary Clinton wanted to fund a mobile money transfer service that would allow Haitian citizens to transfer and receive money on their phones. Well, Digicel applied to be the recipient of that grant money. Four weeks after their application, Digicel actually sponsored a speech for Bill Clinton in Jamaica, and they paid him $225,000. And as it turns out, within four months of that speech, Digicel would receive the first installment of that grant money. The earthquake actually has been great for Digicel and Dennis O'Brien. More than four years since a magnitude 7.0 earthquake devastated Haiti, and outrage there is growing over the largely failed reconstruction effort, despite the hundreds of millions of dollars in aid that has been collected and spent by the IHRC, the Interim Haiti Recovery Commission. So whether you're talking about housing or cell phones, you see that the people that are closest to the Clintons have made out very well from the Haitian earthquake. The rest of the country, the ordinary people of Haiti, not so much. Haitian activists stage a protest outside Hillary Clinton's Manhattan office. The demonstrators claim billions of dollars were stolen through the Haiti Reconstruction Commission headed by Bill Clinton. They also say Haiti was used as a cover for foreign governments to funnel kickbacks of possibly hundreds of millions of dollars through the Clinton Foundation. They say it was done in exchange for favors that Hillary was doing for them as Secretary of State. The tragedy is we had an opportunity to rebuild in a way that would give the people of that country hope. Sadly, that opportunity was squandered, and what took place, rather than rebuilding Haiti, was the self-enrichment by friends of the Clintons. For all of Bill Clinton's talk about building Haiti back better, the fact remains that the most visible evidence of Clinton's role in the recovery isn't the improvement of daily life for everyday Haitians but the construction of new luxury hotels just miles from the folks who have been living in tarps, USAID, handed out immediately after the earthquake. We are telling the world of the crimes that Bill and Hillary Clinton are responsible for in Haiti. But while the world eventually lost interest in Haiti's recovery, the influence and connections afforded to donors from the Clinton Foundation appear to have been lessons learned